This is 2023. In the world of 2023, you probably are managing three to four email accounts or at least a few OTT platform accounts like Amazon Prime, maybe Netflix, definitely 100% a couple of bank accounts you are managing. On top of that, you are also a constant learner. So at least two or three platforms where you are registered and you also maintain their password. So why on this God's green earth, in the world of 2023, you are not using any one password manager? This is really non-negotiable. You should be using at least one. Not using a password manager is really a ba bad idea. Probably you are using the same password for all of the things, which is again super bad. Absolutely terribly a uh, bad idea. But obviously there might be cases that you are just writing all of them in some Excel sheet or some all of that. That is also okay, but that actually loses your accessibility. All the time you have to keep on looking it. You need something which automatically works in your phone, in your browser, everywhere where you go. And also on top of that, we need trust. We need security as well. And on top of that, sometimes these password managers, they change their plan abruptly. I was using one, but one night they just changed the plan and it went all in chaos. So this happens quite a lot. So we need something which is much more reliable, much more something which is open source because we all programmers love open source so that we can probably contribute some features if we don't like something or we want to add something. And on top of that, hey, it's open source. We all programmers love it. So in this video, I would love to introduce you some more details and some of the familiarity with going into production. This video is all about going zero to production. We'll take a sample project, which is a password manager in this case. You will learn that how you can deploy them and how you can use them on your personal premises. So this is going to be a fantastic video where a lot of talk around production is going to happen. You will learn so much. I highly, highly recommend you to at least try it with me. This is not gonna cost you too much of the money, just a production basic and you will absolutely love how you can actually do it. And this is super amazing. So I would like to introduce you something which I am personally using these days, which is Passbold, a password manager, which is amazing. The reason is it is security first. And these password managers have a problem. Every single time a password manager goes a little bit into the hype, people start attacking on it. There are a lot of attackers out there in the market which attacks these ones. But this is open source. So there is a lot of community that is around which helps to maintain its security. Any flaws are there are easily detected, reported and updated there as well. On top of that, let's just say somebody knows Passbowl.com and he's attacking there. And obviously it is very secure, but maybe you are still panicking. So what you can do is you can take their open source version, deploy it on your domain, which could be uh, cutepuppy11.com. Nobody knows about cutepuppy11.com and Nobody is that cruel to attack on cutepuppy11.com and you can just use that as a personal password manager. No need to worry about anything. That's the beauty about open source. That's why I love about them. And the best part about this is you can use their on-prem or you can do sign up for a cloud. I just go ahead and try out the 14 days free trial. Also, you can use this coupon code here and they will also give you some uh, additional discount. I talked to them and they were very kind enough to give me this coupon code and uh, yeah, that is something that you also get being a viewer of this channel, you get some advantage. If you like them, that's great. If you don't like them, you can cancel anytime. And <laughs> there is no money that is going to be involved from your pocket if you don't like them. So there's a lot of details that how you can organize things, how you can generate the password, access from anywhere, and you can have it all on your infrastructure. So this is something. Now notice here that you can run them on totally on uh, Docker, that is nice, Kubernetes, Ubuntu, AWS, if you like that, or DigitalOcean, which we'll be practicing in this video, at least do the practice. This is good for you to learn some new stuff. And there's a lot more here. There's all commands and everything is available. The best part is you can click on the star and at least check out the repository, which is available there. So this is the repository. They do a lot of work. Recently, they also rolled out their web UI as well. So in case you want to try them out and seek them out. So let me go ahead and open the pass bolt up here. So you can see there is a lot of, so there's a Passbold API, Docker, CLI. Uh, there's one more repository which actually got my attention. There we go. Uh, Passbold style something, style guidelines. Uh, so let me, I just saw it there probably. Yeah, here it is, Passbold uh, style guidelines. So they also give you that. So you can try this out that how the guidelines are there. They even give you the storybook and everything. So there's a lot. You can go ahead and try this out and see if there's, uh, blocks are impressive. Maybe you want to have a UI just like this. So uh, maybe you want to try them out. So go ahead and try the how the UI is and everything. Power of open source. I just absolutely love it. In case there is something that they are missing, go ahead and add this. The good thing which I liked about it is the contributor, a lot of them. Plus, look at the commits. 18 hours ago. Yeah, very actively maintained. 
and you can check out all the commits that what they are doing, uh, merging. So yes, they are taking the open source contribution. A lot is happening here into the release. Okay, common. Okay, a lot of stuff, stuff is happening. A lot is happening. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll be now moving and learn about how we can deploy things into production, at least on DigitalOcean. If you need a more of these guides, let me know in the comment section. I love to do this. So we have this. So this is how uh, the DigitalOcean will look like to you at the first. Now from here in the big create button, you can actually go ahead and use droplets, Kubernetes or apps or something like this. But DigitalOcean actually provides you a marketplace so that you don't have to actually configure everything from scratch. Companies can do it automatically for you. So from here, we're going to be searching for this marketplace, which is at the bottom. So go ahead and search for or uh, click on that. And here, what we're going to do is just search for the Passbolt. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to search for Passbolt, Community Edition, Open Source, all of my favorite words. OK, so we're going to be searching for that. It says Passbolt, and we're going to be creating a droplet. All right. This actually takes a couple of minutes. That's due to DigitalOcean. It starts processing and working of that. I would love to select it in Bangalore, Bangaluru. I think something could be more nearby to me. Hey, DigitalOcean, please give me some servers in probably Hyderabad, Mumbai, or Delhi. That would be close. Anyways, uh, we'll go up here. We don't need to select anything from here. Just keep on scrolling till you go for a CPU options. Uh, for this particular pass bolt, you can actually choose a regular one and a $6 one. The $4 one is not compatible for this one. Uh, DigitalOcean used to provide a $5 one, but they're now moving to four and six. Anyways, we can just pick up this one. And that's it. You don't need to add any volume, nothing. Now you have to just look for password because you might want to connect the server via root. Why SSH, you can download a key pair of that or password. I'll just get a password for me. So I'm going to go ahead and type a password. I'm just showing it. Otherwise, I usually generate all of my password through uh, the service itself. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, this is my user password and it needs to be complex fairly complex uh, i usually leave this all to my password manager hey do this all complex stuff <laughs> and we're going to just create a droplet now this creation of droplet no who saves in google chrome so this actually is going to take just a couple of minutes and uh, we can just pause it till now and let's wa wait on the other side catch up on the other side till it's all done all right so our droplet is now done and one thing I would like to mention here is I already have this extension enabled, which is Passbolt extension. This is available for Chrome and even the apps are available. I have this extension connected to my original account, which I actually use for storing all of my password. I have disconnected it. Uh, so that might create a couple of issues because you can again and again connect with other ones. Uh, but I'll still show you what is the next process and step, which is super easy. Now, after this, all you got to do is you have got your IP. Copy this, uh, move back, and that's it. Now just follow the steps. Passbolt is not configured, so let's go ahead and configure it. Environment is configured, the GPG is configured correctly. The SSL is not enabled because we are on HTTP. Uh, if we enable the TLS from the DigitalOcean, it will just get on HTTPS as well. And usually the idea is actually to add a domain. So click up here and just add a domain. That is usually a better option uh, to serve, like cutepuppy11.com something. Uh, let's start the configuration. The first one is MySQL. Now, the good thing here is that the password user and the database name, you might be thinking, I would love to change it on my own. You don't need. Everything after the password user underscore, this is actually generated every time a different. So same goes for password. This is generated differently. And the database name is also generated with a random va value. So it's it's still uh, very secured. Again, as I told you that password is all about, uh, yes, they mention it like openly security first. So security is the first thought in it, which I absolutely love. Now, all you got to do is click on next. Now is create an open PGP keys. Uh, so let's go ahead and create that. So we're going to be creating on the server name. Uh, usually we're going to go with the server name as IP, but let's just call this one as uh, my company server is Hitesh. So let's just go with that. Okay. And uh, server email, let's go with the classic of my uh, dummy email. Comment, we don't need it. So we're going to click on next. Hey, who saves on Chrome? And this one actually takes tiny bit of the time. Uh, let's just wait till it spins. This is actually dependent on which machine you are choosing on DigitalOcean and how fast it can process. Uh, usually doesn't take too much of the time. Come on, do it faster. Or should I pause the video? All right, so it's done. Didn't took much. So sender name, how you want your company to address. So we're going to go ahead and say Hitesh. And the sender email, again, the dummy email that I use all the time. 
SMTP configuration, this is where you need to actually configure it. And this is if you have the host name here already matched up, this is where it actually makes a lot of sense. So you can just select for your host name. So our host name is 139.59.1.0. Dot six three. All right, so you can use TLS, port name, your username. I'm gonna go ahead and select Hitesh. The password, I'm gonna go ahead and select a password, probably a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, and the client, you don't need it. And by the way, you can actually try to send the test email from this server as well. Uh, let's go ahead and we don't need to test this. You can actually do this. Client, you can mention your client as well, Gmail or whatever the client you're using. Uh, we're not going to be setting it up as of now, but you can obviously do this. Or uh, maybe there is a sender email or something client that you have. You can go ahead and check this. Click on next. Uh, admin details. So how you want it to have. So I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, just email details here. Next. And it will initialize the database. The GPG keys are there. And that's it. That is all it takes to actually set up your own account and Passbolt and everything. It says, welcome to Passbolt. Please create a passphrase. Okay. Uh, passphrase, I'm going to go ahead and use my passphrase. Oops, I'll choose a different one. Okay, fairly strong. Okay, we're going to click on next. And uh, I don't want to store it or I'll store it, save it. <laughs> I'll just click on the next. And the security token, uh, you should really change it because nobody remembers this. And choose a color, whatever you like, and then click on next. Now, since my extension is already enabled, that's why it's automatically detected. In your step, it will ask you that, hey, please would like to ext uh, add an installation extension or something. In my case, it was already, I'm a user. So yeah, it's, it's there. And now you can just go ahead and create any items, name, URL, username, password, description, quality. There are a lot of ways to randomize this. There are also settings that how we'd like to your password to be strong, uh, what passphrase are there, uh, what characters you want to use, which one you'd like to use or not. There's a lot of options here and keep, they are keep on adding because it's a community driven project. I'll just stop this. And by the way, a couple of more things which I liked, you can just click on this, choose pro profile. This is the new one that they have added, which is now impressive, which is mobile apps. So you can have your mobile apps both on App Store and Android. This is entirely on you, a community project which gives you all the apps and everything. You can host it on your own, how secure you want it to be. This is the power of open source which they are running totally on. By the way, all the things that you see like MFA and all these things, you can do configure. There are users, right now there is only one user. Uh, you can provide more admin details if you wish, administrations. Like what more you want? There would be so much. And on top of that, if you're missing any feature and you are a programmer, you can just request them in their GitHub or you can just add them. That would be a great contribution. So this is something really nice. Now, one more thing that in case you don't want to manage all these server setups and everything, you can always go for their cloud sign up that, hey, this is all and just start your workspace and everything. Their pricing is pretty open. You can just check them out. And there's a coupon code as well. You can try this coupon code and work for that. And there is a community edition which is free forever, which we used and learned how to deploy the things and told you it's not that much crazy. If you are in any organization, just try them out or maybe just try them out. Use my coupon code. What's the harm in that? At least try this out and you'll see that what is the difference between hosting it on your own and when they manage all these things. So this is super amazing project, super exciting project. I was super happy to collaborate with Passbolt. Amazing product, all open source, all accessibility are there and a great product. So I love this. Hope you have enjoyed this and have learned that how we can take things from zero to production. If you have enjoyed this, let me know. If you want more such installation video or deploying onto production video, just let us in the comment section. I would love to make them regardless of what the product is or what the uh, project you are building. Just let us know. I would love to help you to move your project on production. So that is it for this video. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.